Nobody was talking about him. The story is true. You should hold back. This would have been that one case where you were talking about like watching the stream as we were playing it. It would have probably come in handy here because your uh, feedback would have told us whether it was working or not. That would have been funny. Although the other thing is, is it? I, I, I'm just about to do that actually. Oh, okay, but uh, I know Facebook has a really aggressive uh, sound noise removal that they do on their uh, videos, and it also messes with the time. So like it speeds it, speeds it up and slows it down, so it's not actually real time. That, that's something I didn't know before I started doing this. Is that when you watch videos on on Facebook, including live videos, it's not real time. You get a little bit faster and a little bit slower and a little bit faster as it kind of goes. And so the when if you try to like mix in another take, you have to like continually edit in and out little tiny samples oh. of like a fraction of a second here or there. Otherwise, it loses sync with re the real uh, sure. uh, take. And uh, you then it echoes and does all sorts of wonky things. And so nobody's, I think we've, everyone has given up trying to watch. <laughs> and so uh, all we have is uh, whatever this last take is and uh, my mp3 player. So why don't we go back into the, the story about gasoline and this guy with his, at the gas station. So there was a guy, you were at the gas station, and what happened? Well, um, I was impatiently waiting for uh, some silliness to end. This, this, this quiet kid walks in with this large empty juice jug and he wants to buy gasoline and uh, someone else walks in with him and is kind of advising him to to buy a jerry can because legally they, they can't sell you gasoline okay. uh, unless it's in some kind of certified receptacle like a jerry can which you can buy at the store but I had just I was impatient because the day is long and because of the events going on in my family right now. And okay. I began ranting about stuff that that really doesn't need to be repeated. Right. But um, I think if, if you're young and you've never ran out of gas before and you are desperate in order to get the get the vehicle home, you will try whatever you can in order yeah, to... Yeah, you'll try uh, anything, basically. ...in order to get gas, but even to cut costs, because, you know, when you're a kid, you... Yeah. Yeah, like, take an empty box and line it with a plastic bag, like a garbage bag or something, and then try and buy some gasoline in a box. They're, they're <laughs> not going to sell it to you, but... And so, especially when it's your first time. Yeah. Like, there's, 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 there's no precedent, so it's... Maybe creativity is isn't staunched at all when it's your first when it's it, it's your first attempt at, at something before you really know the rules of, of of how something works. Right. 
And I, I definitely but, don't remember that yeah. particular rule being so covered I, in driver I, training I myself, personally. It. Say again? Mm. Well, driver training would be, would, 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 would be useful for many. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, he, so he came with, uh, and what was it he came uh, I'm sure the individual had a, a license, but... Yeah. And so what, what happened with, um, with you know, this like individual? An empty uh, tour, they just wouldn't let him buy any gasoline in this in, 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 in this juice jug. Okay. Like this, just like a regular juice, like this clear plastic juice bottle. Okay. In which you, you would buy, say, two or three liters of uh, cranberry juice or something like that. Actually, that's kind of what it looked like. Was like ocean actually spray ocean something spray something or like something, that. yeah. Yeah, and he wanted. And so what? I, I don't recall. Okay. <laughs> the label said, but yeah, of course. And so what what happened after that with with this guy and trying to buy gas? Like they wouldn't sell him the gas. They just told him to buy a jerry can. Okay. And I just kind of smiled. I just grinned because I mean that's what uh, that that's the only way you're going to get the gas. If if you have a nice vehicle and you can afford the gasoline to begin with, just t ten extra dollars for the for the jerry can really shouldn't. And, and like for gas, ten yeah, bucks doesn't go all that that far these days, but, right? So like it's, I mean, I'm sure you can get to the point where you really do need that that ten bucks of gas or whatever. But if you've got the vehicle already and you need, you're already putting gas into it, right? It's you might as well have a jerry can or something le that you can legally put gas in if you've gotten to the point where you need it. But people. Yep. Actually, we were uh, just uh, driving right before we yeah. started broadcasting here, and at least in Saskatoon, uh, we passed by two gas stations that were, I think, 111 per liter, whereas everywhere else in the city we saw 119. And so something's going on on the east end here. I'm not sure if the price of gas is decreasing, but what? How? I, I'd imagine it's probably pretty similar in Regina, right? 111, 119, something in that range, or? Do you know? It is. Okay, because like Thunder Bay, that's one thing about Thunder Bay is that our gas there was consistently above you. I can't tell you the distribution. But yeah, but uh, so I, I, I guess more on, on on that side though. Uh, so so have you like do you drive yet? I, I I seem to remember last time we talked, you were still kind of mostly bussing around. Yeah, right. Right now I'm 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 taking the the bus. I would prefer to drive, but at at this time it's not an expense I choose to pay for. Fair enough. I mean, it's, I don't know. I think if you can afford one, if, if, if you can afford one car, then you probably can't afford a car. It, it sounds kind of silly, but I, I, I once heard somebody say, a, a famous comedian, he, he was saying that if you can afford 10 boats, if, if you can afford to operate 10 boats, then hmm. you can afford one boat that, because that it costs me. so much money. And there are so many incidentals that you're you're not factoring into it. So, but that's that's yeah, kind of like the level to aim at for boats, is the the ten level, and then for cars it's kind of closer to one. Or, well, I don't know. I I'm I'm not sure what kind of ratio one one would want, but uh, the idea is affordability, and it, right. it, it it's going to deal with just some expenditure rate and some versus some some in income rate. So really, just some ratio, some expenditure ratio, or something. Okay. Yeah. So no, and I get exercised this way. That's that's one thing that I yeah. That you, I, that, that like I, I, I know I that the rest it. of the world can't see you, but you're looking in pretty good shape. So obviously that part is working. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it, things are holding right now. My but I've I, I've had problems with a a lung collapsing. So oh no. Yeah, looks can be deceptive. That is not good. I guess I guess more yeah. on the, the the side of the the bus though. Uh, no, not necessarily. The like I've heard of a little bit of horror stories in Thunder Bay's bus system, and it's been a while since I've rode the bus. How is the the bus uh, treating you in terms of like the actual rides themselves, the the people involved? Like, how has it gotten worse over the years, uh, especially kind of since I left town? How how has the bus been treating you? In some ways, it's better. Um, oh. There are more express routes. Okay. But they've hired a, a, a lot of younger bu bus drivers, a lot of younger operators, I should say. And um, the, the younger operators, they have very heavy feet. <laughs> so, so they're very heavy on the gas and heavy on the brakes. So if, if you recall Mr. Heavyfoot, I, some kid in the hall back in the day. No, I, m I missed that one. I, I remember seeing kids in the hall, but I, didn't, I don't video. remember Mr. that. Mr. Heavyfoot. Okay. It's hilarious. 
specifically Mr. Heavyfoot. <laughs> That's exactly what some of the bus drivers are like, because it's just this jerking back and forth. And of course, they start and stop so much that it's this constant jerking. Yeah, so it kind of makes it hard to do stuff like read. From air compressors, which oh. is, you know, like 90 decibels. Yeah, and it's actually still pretty loud in the bus as well. Like, I could, I could definitely see yeah. that being loud outside, but it's actually loud inside as well? Quite often. Hmm, that's interesting. Depending on the case, oh yeah, the, the last bus that, that I took, there was this high-pitched, I don't even know what to say, it, it was like this high-pitched squealing sound coming from the air compressor. And so when, yeah, I don't know what to say, I was actually going to go up to the bus driver and just ask her if, if, if she could cease this ultrasonic whistling sound, just mm -hmm. please make it stop, because I'm sure nobody was comfortable. Yeah. But Sure enough, after she started driving, what whatever it was, mechanical device changed and it and, and, and it stopped. But I mean, some people can hear this stuff, and it's like well, especially if it's high pitched you, and like the bus driver is that like into a the cost of the bus ride. So. Yeah, interesting. No, I've uh, like I'm deaf. Yeah, you, either like if it's loud enough to actually damage the the hearing of the the driver, that 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 might be like one thing, but also like a. I seem to remember a lot of the drivers were older. Maybe they've, as you mentioned, kind of got like a, a new generation of uh, younger drivers, so they'll be able to hear it. But uh, if it's especially high pitched, sometimes the older people won't even be able to notice that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I have one song uh, I'm going to try to play. So we'll take a, a brief uh, intermission from the live feed so I can play the song. Because last week I didn't play a song, so I'm going to pause the recording.
robot Sad, sad robot Sad, sad robot All alone You're a sad, sad robot You're a sad, sad robot You're a sad, sad robot You're so alone Alone monthly and uh, you just book a vehicle mm -hmm. um, through the app it shows you which vehicles are there at a specific lot parking lot and then you book that specific one and then it uh, it, it holds it for you and then you again you you've got this gate you have this timing window that you have to reach right but it's an it's another and, set uh, of gates another set of timing windows then you obtain that vehicle uh, for right now this sounds suspiciously similar to yeah. the Regina yeah. car share uh, have you tried that out yet, or is it still kind of like a thing to do yet for you? I have not. You're saying car share. Um, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> I will. I, I I will do a search on that. Okay. Yeah, definitely something to to check out. But uh, I, I I don't want to have to. I don't know. It, like it's got to make financial sense for you, right? For whatever their price point is. But. Oh uh, well. Yeah, in some sense, but I, I still, yeah, yeah, no, and at a certain point, a, a, a person has to take it easy on themselves. Yeah. And a, a vehicle is a way to do that, so, yeah. yeah. And especially as we get older, Affordably, you know, I mean, is the idea. we're both getting to the the age where, like, we it, even if we're still spry enough to go walking and busing all over the city, at some point, we're going to get to the point where it might make sense to have access to that, especially, like you say, in the winter, or that sort of thing. Oh, yes. So I, I guess the last thing I wanted to kind of bring up, and th this is kind of like out, outside of your context a little bit, but uh, while we still have a couple of minutes left, I wanted to briefly pick up um, something that was posted on Flashdot about Facebook's uh, Libra system. Have you heard about the Libra system? Ah, uh, Libra. Yeah. Uh, spelled as... Ella? Uh, well, no. Like, I have not. Okay. So basically... It's not Libra, is it? Uh, no. It's, well, it, it, it's L-I-B-R-A... So I'm assuming it's Libra, but it's basically Facebook's attempt at a cryptocurrency, okay. and they've been in the news this week for oh. being pulled into, I think it's the Senate, the U.S. Senate, and how the, the, the news is is that the Senate's really giving them kind of the third degree, and this is like the third or fourth time that Facebook has been called in in front of the U.S. government, the House of Representatives or the Senate, and the third or fourth time that they're got, kind of getting increasingly frustrated that they keep on having to talk to Facebook and that half of the things that Facebook says are, uh, shall we say, not explicitly truthful. <laughs> and so even when they say things that might even be more or less of good intent and that they're, they're saying, oh, yeah, we're going to make this cryptocurrency and it's going to be decentralized and it's not going to be con controlled by any particular government. It's just going to be a neutral platform for the world. Uh, financial system to be based on and then even when they do that they're questioned and their their intents are uh, it's like well you've you've lied so many times to us why would we believe you this time is one of the the things that people are kind of saying to them but the, the other thing that is in particular of interest this week is they're really focusing on the quote laws relating to money laundering terrorist financing and quote other crimes and so what they're trying to do this week is they're trying to basically make it so that the US government has the ability to control what does and doesn't happen on this network and up until this week Facebook's stance was kind of a, a question of 
well, we're not going to control what happens on the network. We're going to let it basically be like it is in the Bitcoin world where internal to Bitcoin, whatever goes happens. But if you're interfacing with the, the regular financial world, that's where the, the laws apply. That's where the, you have to abide by banking regulations, etc. And so it's interesting that they're kind of whipping uh, this into Facebook having control of that middle, middle point. So I'm not sure if that's a kind of interest to you or not, but kind of wanted to bring it up. So is, is any kind of comment on that at all, or is that just sort of like a, there's a little bit of a uh, delay in between us, so. That, you know, makes sense that Facebook would try this. They have the infrastructure for this. They really do, yeah. And like. Uh, yeah, actually that, that, that makes sense. And, and they're big enough that if they pushed hard enough, a significant portion of the businesses in the world would, sw I think they would switch. And especially like smaller scale stuff, like the people who currently trade on eBay and like who tr trade for inter internet things with PayPal, PayPal would be in big trouble because they would have a lot of the benefits and a lot of the drawbacks of PayPal without the U.S. government interfering. With the U.S. government interfering, I think the game changes a little bit, but I can definitely go into that on other weeks. I don't have to go too deep into it right now, but... Well, if you have... We have these different mechanisms. Some are private in, in which you, you, you see losses. Losses and costs incurred uh, which weren't expected. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you could ki kind of say that it's like a non-conservative uh, cost structure that's private in which losses occur. So does it not make sense that you could have some form of, of non-conservative uh, money exchange system in which there are losses but that's publicly controlled. And at least in, in, in some blockchain sense, I, I think the idea is, is to make it more conservative, to try and prevent loss from occurring. That's what I mean by conservative. I don't Yeah, think you're, you're talking conservative in terms I mean, like of like a conservative, conservative field. Force, but right. Conservative costs. Yeah. And th that actually yes. is a, a good well, way of... Yes, it, it's, it's more mathematical or scientific, yes. Yeah, it, it, and that's a good way, I think, of actually looking at it in terms of the kind of losses throughout the system, in terms of making sure that there, there's the ability to have a cycle without lo loss or without the, where all participants can basically do something and then the net result is... Or gain. Yeah, or, or gain, right, exactly. And when you have that, you have the ability to, to have those repeated cycles happen and rehappen as, as they kind of need to address concerns outside of the system. And so in this case, Facebook may have been trying to minimize that, but I think that, w again, what's, what's kind of happening this week is that the, the government is, is kind of stepping in to change that. Now, it's also interesting that you bring up like the publicly controlled part, right? Because that there is something valuable in that to, to have some kind of a direct control over the financial system, a d direct democratic control, and in this case, Senate, I mean, it, it's an elected body, so that is a, a way for at least the U.S to kind of control what happens financially within their, their, their scope or their borders. The danger, I, I would suggest, uh, would be that this isn't just like a, a U.S. thing. As the Libra is going to be a global payment system. So it's going to be like a global payment system, democratically yeah. responsible and, and responsible to the American voter, but it's still just like the American voter rather than Canadians, Uzbeks, Chinese people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's like, to the extent that the democratic system in the states also functions as a democratic system in the world, which I would even suggest to some ex small extent it does, right? Like there, there's enough, the United States is a multicultural enough country that it's, it does have, like it's got the UN, for example. Like there are little bits and pieces of it that do respond to the needs of the world, but those pieces, especially in the, the day and age of the Trump administration, are not always working. Yeah, there is an attempt to influence other other groups, other countries, other companies. Relationships these when when relationships exist be, be between two systems, open or closed, you're you're, you're going to have these kinds of influences to begin with. In some ways, it I think it's good to have some government input mm -hmm. um, because I think there's at least the attempt to address the uh, the concerns of people who are on the lowest rungs of the economic structure. I mean, Facebook doesn't charge people right. for membership, but 
and even for stuff like right now, like we're, we're broadcasting credit. video. Video that used to be an extremely tied in with financial credit. Yeah, so you're saying social credit f tied in financial credit. Oh no no, that's well as long as you remember. I think well, just hold on to your idea. Yeah, because I mean you were one of the first individuals who was talking about social credit a number of years ago with Ripple Pay, mm -hmm. and so it's. It's the, it's the reputation of the individual as, as, a, as a user of the service. And in a certain sense, it's almost like checking your credit score. I mean, it's, it's related to, to, to that. And you're, you're, you're standing as, as a member, and the degree to which you, you are participating in a system is, is, is going to be directly uh, related to, to what you demand of, of that system, what, what products or, or, or services in in some sense, and then you, well, specifically would require more of those services through through Facebook or, or some other some other service provider, like money, for example. Right. People who require a lot of money to, to, to do what they do with it go through the right channels, but then it depends on on the service provider that you choose to go with. And of course, it's it's kind of like buyer beware. You're going to have private companies who, who, who do what they do, companies in uh, Shenzhen or Beijing or Hong Kong versus companies in the, the West, which there are different forces that, that influence these, these different situations. And so to at least be able to track transactions in some sense, because it is becoming so much more digital, is, is necessary because now you see commercials for people, people who are actually having fun checking their credit score on their phone, and they're like laughing, and and, and they're 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 at a cafe, and 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 somehow it's it's like this is the new fun thing to do. But ten years ago, people didn't like checking. Well, your credit score wasn't something like people just wouldn't talk about that. True. Sure. But the reality is now that you can falsify an individual. It's like this is just becoming a, a, a reality. And, and so implementing blockchain and other computational devices. And so there's going to be various issues involved in that because what you're going to want is to be able to map signal losses in systems. And it's because data transfer involves signal and transfer through, through, through space. So you need encryption, and you, you need to be able to know when data is, is turning, when the, the signals actually go around a corner physically in some kind of optical fiber. There's a little bit of light that, that's given off. Right. And it's, it's not just an optical fiber. You can catch data in various places. So encryption is, is going to come into play because it's more or less going digital. Hey, hey. In any My case, bank's been having problems. So this this has been going on a little bit. So, uh, is there any kind of final thoughts uh, that you want to kind of close on yeah. for the the world here? Well, Libra specifically, I I think it kind of makes sense that Facebook would take this kind of step because of where they're the going. Human, the the human capital that can be leveraged. But I mean, of course, there's the yeah, you're you're going to want to try to appear transparent in in order to try and maintain some legitimacy. Hmm. To, ma to maintain membership within these structures, at, at, at least socially. But there's so much going on that Facebook itself, well, Facebook obviously has to defend itself, and not just Facebook. I mean, the government, various governments have to defend themselves because there are losses in, in, in system, things that you can't necessarily predict. I mean, hardware can go missing. Software can go missing. And this is, I mean, it, it can just be human error, like so, some, some kind of accident. So, or you can have direct hacking. Hmm. And so since that is actually a, a legitimate reason, then I, I, I think it would be necessary for Facebook to try and actually <laughs> maintain some some good appearance as being legitimately trying to maintain some sense of security, especially if it's going to be involving itself in, in, in cryptocurrency, because I shouldn't say cryptocurrency, but... Something appro approaching it, anyway. It's an attempt to make money. Yeah. It's got to be secure. All right. Well, uh, I guess thank, thank you for coming on the show, I guess, Greg. <laughs> and I guess we'll cut it there for now. And... Everyone who is listening, we will see you next week. I don't know what time. Uh, my schedule is in a total state of flux right now, so I'm going to aim for 
roughly the same time we've been doing things, but I can't guarantee what time at all right now. I'll hopefully have a little bit of an update later. But I will see you all later.